Hey everybody! Hey all. Uh, this is the uh, June uh, Leader Games uh, live stream. Yeah. Uh, happy Pride, everybody! And uh, I, my daughter and I assembled a Lego unicorn, and we failed to bring it in for this stream. Oh, so uh, I know well, which side you're talking about, though. I, I have <laughs> way too much going on right now. Uh, today, I'm getting fitted for a lovely new crown after this. Uh, um, after this broadcast, and not for my head, for my teeth. I wouldn't. Brooke had mentioned it earlier, and had, like I thought it was before the stream. You needed it, so I assumed it was a like streaming crown, like the physical. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't know. Uh -uh. Boss um, has to take care of it. I understand. I gotta, I gotta wear a crown. Hmm. Well, you can't afford the horse armor. Uh, yeah. So Diablo, uh, Diablo Four comes out today. It was. I think if you like had pre-ordered it by a certain date, you got to play it since Friday or something like that. Yeah, something like and that. then um, now it's now it's uh, now I'm not a Diablo awesome. guy. Oh, I suppose um, yeah, I'm not Cole. I'm Nick. If you haven't seen me before. <laughs> yeah, this is this is Nick. Um, this is Nick Cole. Cole Nick. Yeah. Cole's um, in the UK. Uh, yeah. We're getting back. He's he's back. They flew in last night and he is recovering from jet lag. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, Cole just went to UKG, which looked pretty cool. Yeah. I, I had not really looked at it. People have asked me if I'm going to go, and I I don't know. I just hadn't taken it seriously yet. But I would the, maybe be going to go to the UK, I know. Yeah, <laughs> it's, yeah. It's the UK element that, yeah, that would get is you. most appealing. Yeah, I mean, if like like Cole, if I did go to UKG or Tokyo Game Market, yeah. I would go a week early. Of and, course. Yeah, 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 yeah for yeah. sure. So uh, I haven't been to Japan since 2000, and I haven't been to the United Kingdom ever. Um, so what have you been playing, Patrick? Oh, have I been playing? <laughs> have you been playing anything? Uh, yeah, I've been playing lots of stuff. So this weekend, I got a hankering for PAX Transhumanity. Oh yeah, you said that. And I don't know why. I know you. Uh, I, know you I know you really like Transhumanity. I, li I like. I like the theme of Transhumanity, and I like the. Uh, what I was telling Anne earlier today was that I like um, that to me the game you're building a business because you're patenting your your research firm, you're yep. patenting technology, you're building. Then you know the, the assumption when you build a research firm is that someday you'll be manufacturing mm -hmm. a new item, and so you're building that. And to me, it does better the simulation of the job of being me yeah. uh, than other business games because it's not about Managing ca positive cash flow is an important skill I have, but it's also about how you build the system that recognizes sure. when to go, when to do things, mm -hmm. and how to like utilize the resources you have to do the things you want to do. So that how many players did you play? Uh, so I played uh, the interns, the uh, playtesting interns, and I played on Friday. So I was three player. Nice. And then I played a solo game on Saturday because someone said. Don't play the solo game. Just play a two-player multi-handed. Okay. And I did that, and I got to say, not a fan. But then, like, two-player multi-handed <laughs> versus yourself, wasn't it for you? Yeah, it wasn't. Sure. I, and I played on TTS, and I think that was part of it, because I was getting tired of scrolling back and forth. Sure, and switching sides. Because it, it's just such a big display. Yeah. And then if you play it in person, you, your eye can sweep. It's mm -hmm. one of those games I wouldn't want to play on TTS anyway, because it's just... It's so you wide. just you just have to go back and yeah, forth yeah, so much yeah. that, that it gets hard to watch. Uh, and then I played uh, so, so Sunday morning. Uh, a friend of mine just texted and said, "Hey, you want to play?" And I was like, "Yeah, sure, let's do it." So we played Sunday morning, which is a huge novel. Yeah, 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 yeah. Nice. That was really weird. So um, playing D and D. Been playing. Uh, we switched Thirteenth Age. Uh, played some Ticket to Ride Rails and Sales with my spouse. Nice. So we played that one. No. Uh, it's like Ticket to Ride with 30% more. Sure. Yeah. I mean, rails and sales. Rails and sales, yeah. In every the sales are the 30%. And you, you got to build these harbors or something. I can't remember what they're called. And the harbors are negative four points if you don't build them. And then like 20 points if you do build them okay. on the world map side. So you're like, well, I got to build these. Yeah, yeah. It's a 24 point swing. Yeah. So it's, you're not going to do that. Uh, what are you even playing? <laughs> um, my weekend was I played like... I think like ten hours of Street Fighter Six mm -hmm. in total. Um, yeah, I played a lot. I've been playing a lot of. Street Is that Fighter. open world? It has the. It has a an open world uh -huh. like hub where you can. There's like a single player mode now where you can like build your avatar that looks like you, and you can uh -huh. like go learn how to throw a Hadouken from Ryu and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. But I've been playing a lot of just like competitive, like you know, 
ranked and whatnot. I, I, yeah. I like the premise that he can just teach someone how to do that. Well, it's inside yeah. you. Yeah, the problem is you. <laughs> you can do it too if you train hard Anyone can do it if they try. If you just it's, train hard yeah, enough. Yeah, yeah. Um, no, yeah, I've been playing that a lot. I think it's uh, it's like the best. It's the best one in the series since like four. It's really, really good. Um, good. Yeah, so I've had a lot of fun with that. Um, I've been playing um, Ragnaroks a few times, which is like the um, follow up to. It's the same designer, Santorini, mm-hmm. um, published not by them though, not not by Rocks. It's published by Gray Fox, mm-hmm. um, and it's like uh, two player abstract with a Norse theme on it, and it's a very simple like area majority game where you. Like, move a guy and you cast a stone out as far as you can, and at the end of the game, it's however much territory you have. Mm-hmm. Um, and I've really liked it. Um, it has the the really good early asymmetric thing where I can't tell what are good moves or bad moves for, yeah. like, the first ten moves of the game still. There's a lot of open space. Um, figuring out, like, what... Yeah, yeah how, how things cascade into each other has been really fun. Um... Some Have you played Go? Yeah, a little bit, and it, it's definitely like that. Like yeah. it's 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 I I liked it because it was Go, but without all of the rule, like without all go. the weird rules and all of it. it's like pick a piece, move a piece, do it. Yeah, I, yeah. I found it to be really nice. And I know you said it's kind of like um, hey, that's my fish. When you you looked oh, at yeah, it, yeah. you said it, it yeah. seemed similar. Yep. Um, but yeah, no, I've been having a lot of fun with that. Apparently, my phone's on. Let me uh, let me just go and turn that uh, off. Yeah, fine. <laughs> um, and then other stuff I played was I played Dredge. Video game wise, yeah. um, I played all of Dredge. I really liked that. I hadn't had um, it was one of my friends was like, I was talking about. It, I was like, yeah, I think it's like kind of like a dad game, um, and they were like offended because they also really liked it. And I was like, I just mean like it's not you know the the loop is kind of as much or as little as you want. Right. I, can, I can go fish a ton and go back and sell, or I literally can like go out grab one fish, come back sell it. And like yeah. it doesn't. The game's not. Upset one way or another, it just there's knows. No timer, like, it just knows, no, like, yeah. yeah. Eventually, yeah. you should get all the stuff. Yeah. You'll unsolve the mystery. Um, really cool world, though. This guy. Yeah, I don't know. No, I was I was super into. Um, it's a really good slow burn of like, and it's only like six or eight hours, maybe like total. So like, I didn't again. Also, dad game. Yeah, that's because, exactly. Yeah, 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 not, yeah, not forty hours of content. Yeah, I didn't yeah. feel like I needed to keep going. It was like every night. I'm like, okay, cool. I'm like going to this new island, and like yeah. that was the whole night of it. Um, really cool. Yeah, really enjoyed Dredge. I, uh, I I'm so disconnected from video games in that way. Like when if I was to, like the new island, I would just be like, all right, mm-hmm. you know, so, just like excited. And yeah. the anticipation isn't there for me right now. Yeah, no, it's been cool. I'm um, the raft does have it. Yeah, so every, you t- every time we go to a new place in raft, you're like, oh, it's gonna be. Yeah, you know, it's way different. Yeah. But yeah, no, I haven't. And then um, I was at a friend's house and watched them play Tears of the Kingdom for a bit, and that seems cool. But I I think I might. Still avoid it because I wasn't a huge Breath of the Wild person, sure, so I sure. don't think Tears of the Kingdom is going to. I think, I think Tears of the Kingdom. I think Breath of the Wild is Tears of the Kingdom's worst marketing, like because it was so polarizing. Right. Uh, I think right. a lot of people, even if they improved a lot of the loop, yeah, they're exactly. not going to jump back in. So, yeah. The new Katamari came out yesterday. Oh yeah, yeah. Uh, or yep. t- today. Yeah. No, it was Friday. It. it was Friday. Yeah, yeah, Friday. I picked that up. Um, I have not played the final chapter of Raft yet, so no spoilers. Um, it turns into a bigger raft. <laughs> I mean, our, our raft is pretty big. <laughs> big uh, it, it, would, it wouldn't actually be seaworthy. Is, is my is my thoughts about the raft? Yeah. Um, most of my raft content I've seen is from that like Let's Game It Out channel, where mm-hmm. he makes just the most absurd. Oh sure, yeah. Raft, yeah. And it's yeah. like a raft that's like only zip lines or something. <laughs> it's still somehow barely sailing. I like the premise of that because the zip line, like whatever this part is called, mm-hmm. um, it, like all tools in the game, wears out. Sure. And so I'd be like, what if I was just on the wrong side of the boat and I break my zip, zip line? line. Yeah, oh, like, oh, no. zip line I have hook. to swim across it now. Yeah. Uh, swim across is pretty easy though. Uh-huh. Um, Oh, and then I've also been playing a lot of um, Omega Strikers, uh-huh. which is like the uh, 3v3 soccer video game with like League of Legends controls. Um, super good. Really good. Like it? it's, it's Omega Strikers. Oh, that's it's called. Cool. Yeah. Um, really good. I, I, I'm i in my competitive gaming phase right now, I guess. I Apparently. Know. Yeah, I'm all about, all about winning. <laughs> well, so I, was, I was streaming Street Fighter to some of my friends the other day, and I'm like... Getting destroyed by this E Honda, and it's like, I think it's like twenty six and four. Yeah, this I've only won four times. One of my friends is like, "Why don't you quit?" And I'm like, 
my my willingness to lose is what makes me great. <laughs> he just like busted out laughing. <laughs> uh, I quit after like thirty. He got to like thirty wins, and I was like, "We'll call it." That was. Uh, I'm gonna call it a moral win, but you win. Yeah, it, well, though it was, yeah, yeah. my my ego is so big. I got you know, I, I you know, losing, losing, losing. Got one, and like you know, win four finally happened, and I was like, my friends like, all right, well, obviously pack it up, and I was like, no, I need to prove it wasn't a fluke, <laughs> and I lose like seven more in a row. <laughs> so it was. Uh, that was my evening on on Friday though. Nick also boxes and for real. Yeah, yeah. I also and so I like I like the idea that you'd bring that attitude. Like you just get you're in sparring, <laughs> you just get wrecked twenty times. You're like, no, I got this one. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you're really, you know, you're, you know, only way to get better. You gotta lose. You just gotta lose. You gotta lose. Of, getting. I wanted to put a joke in uh, Adventure Time say the. Uh, yeah. It's like uh, getting, failing at something is the is the first step to being good at it or something. Yeah, yeah. You know? Like failing a bunch of times is the path to being good. Yeah. At, yeah. Uh, cool. I also played Bolt Gun, the oh yeah, yeah, the forty k FPS where you play a space marine, which mm-hmm. is a weird energy because mm-hmm. I mean they're space xenophobes, but yeah, uh, it's it's made a lot of interesting choices, and I l- like like that they tried. Mm-hmm. I don't know if they were all right. Sure. Um, so I do like. I mean, it's cool seeing the forty k stuff, and it's cool seeing like the like literal like chaos. Adept with plasma gun, you sure. know, come it's at like you. It's the thing from the, yeah, 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 it's the yeah. thing. It's the you know, or like the the flamers, the flamers, or whatever. And um, but uh, the um, health resets between levels, mm-hmm. so you don't feel bad. I like that because you don't have to like go grab a level at the end to like get all get back to full health. Sure, because sure. like oh, it's just gonna reset anyway. Yeah, I don't, it doesn't I don't matter care. then. Yeah, nice. and then you can start any level. You can just restart any level and not worry about like continuity or progress or anything like that. If you want to go back and look for secrets or whatever, sure. whatever. Um, also, uh, it has a feature in it where you can just turn off damage. Oh, nice! You don't get damage, so you can just blow through it. Yeah, you can yeah. just blow through it if you want, and it does. That doesn't mark. That doesn't. That's not cheating. It doesn't mm-hmm. mark against having achievements or anything. Sure. Uh, I'm not gonna do it, but I was like, yeah, I could see where like if you're gonna get like some people are gonna get. St- I got stuck at the end of. Um, uh, there was a first-person shooter. Oh my gosh! Um, Doom. It, Doom. Doom. It wasn't Doom. Uh, so I got stuck in this FPS, and I was even talking about it online. And the guy came in on Twitter and said, "You know, you can change the difficulty." Yeah. And the, the designer came in and said, "Yeah, you can change the difficulty." And I was like, "Well, okay." And then I lose. <laughs> and then I lose. Yeah. So. Um, uh, Patty came in with the right quote sucking at something is the first step to being sort of good at something and that used to be my windows uh, when I was making the company that was my I'm, windows background I'm sort of good at beating you Honda now so I'm sort of good <laughs> just sort of yeah I'm sort of good uh, anyone, can anyone tell me the name of the boomer shooter with uh, uh, it's the guy with two he has two like harvesting like he has two hooks for harvesting grain and I cannot remember the name of it. Dusk, thank, thank you, SP. Dusk. I knew someone Instantly. to know it. Uh, yeah, uh, Duke Nuko. Yeah, so Dusk, Dusk is pretty good. Dusk has some amazing level design, though, so I highly recommend it. If that's your thing, go check it out. I always like to see what Warhammer is willing to do with their license in the video game space. All of the video games are always so... Why? I mean, I saw they have the... Um... The one that I got announced recently, it's like Twisted Metal, but you're playing as like the orcs. Yeah. It's like good. just like the orcs the in the cars. Cult. Yeah, 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 that game looks so cool. I'm like, yep. yeah, they, they know when. Just like, yeah, I don't know, the orc cars. Go ahead, sure. Go, go for it, yeah. yeah. It's really cool. The, uh, and there was also a Guns Gore and Cannoli had a remake um, yeah. called Blood, Teeth, and Bullets. Or something. Yeah, yeah, shoot I saw us, that. Shoot us. And it's it's Guns Gore and Cannoli, but with, with orcs. With orcs. Fighting yeah, Eldar yeah. and Space Marines and stuff. Yeah. I do like uh, in... In Bolt Gun, you can push T, and your character will just taunt. And it has just I, nothing. I don't think it does anything yeah, mechanically. Yeah. It's just funny to me, because I mean, all the enemies know where you are, so it's not like they're like it's not like you're drawing ag or anything mm-hmm. like that. Because there's only one person in the game, you have all the ag. So I just thought it was cute. I really liked in uh, in Pizza Tower, the taunt is also that you like don't learn it until pretty late, or maybe you do, and I just don't read uh-huh. um, <laughs> that the taunt is also <laughs> one of those all of me. So I was gonna be like, you you know immediately. I'm like, well, I don't read. Um, but it was the taunt is also the parry, and it's so funny. You like you like, you like dabs, and you like parry the enemy <laughs> and stuff. It's super funny. That's fantastic. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, let's do some studio news. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we are in the process of we're starting to print. Um, ooh, top three boomer shooters. Okay, let me think right, about real quick. that. Yeah. Uh, I, I'm gonna go with Dusk. Uh, I still play Doom, mm-hmm. like Doom 1993 Doom, and I haven't played my house yet. For anyone to ask. 
And um, have you heard about this? I have. Okay. Yes, yeah. I have. And then, um, uh, oh god, I gotta do. I gotta do one more. You need one more. Quick. Uh, it's not Bullgun. Oh, uh, Nightmare Reaper is fantastic. Okay. I had stopped playing Nightmare Reaper though because it has slingshot. Like you throw out this thing, like quite like early Quake did, and then like you like you zoom to towards it. it. Sure. Yeah. Made me sick, sure, so sure. sick to my stomach. Like I, like I kept playing it, and like I got further and further. In the game I was like, God, why am I just? It just feels so awful. You gotta keep doing the mechanic more and more. Yeah, too. and you're doing it more yeah, and more yeah. and more as as the game goes on. I was like, oh, it's the it, it all the falling you have to do, and and all the jumping, mm-hmm. like the horizon moving, just made me so sick. So. Yeah. Uh, maybe I'll take some Benadryl or some Dramamine someday and fin- <laughs> hit finish Nightmare Reaper, but until then. Uh, all right, so, uh, yeah, so uh, Studio News, uh, the ninth printing of Root is low in our stores, uh, like our actual warehouse, and um, so we're getting ready. We're working on Root 10, the 10th printing of Root right now. Why am I talking about it? N- n- no one's going to see a disruption in the supply because we have it so well-timed. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm just excited. But it's news. It's it's so also news. Cool. It also definitely qualifies as news. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We print. we can't believe how much we printed of that game. So we've printed. I think I think this means we've printed probably four hundred thousand in English alone. Um, so that's uh, that's pretty cool. It might even be more than that because mm-hmm. some of the runs were much larger than forty. I know the first run was small, but there was other ones. There were six, yeah. sixty and eighty. Forty is about uh, as large as we can do at the factory uh, logistically. It get, it, things get complicated yeah. after forty thousand. Uh, yeah, so that's pretty exciting. No changes. It's just, it just says, it just says ten on the box. Yep. Um, we just got in. Uh, yeah, half a million people, and that means millions of people may have played Root at this yeah, point, which is, which is crazy. Because it's me. always you. Know, it's like well, one copy it takes at least two people to play. Play, yeah, yeah. <laughs> maybe four, <laughs> just, maybe eight, yeah, maybe four, yeah right. I saw some market research before I got into the industry that said that, like, they had figured out that only, like, a quarter of Monopolies were ever even opened. <laughs> yeah. So something, something spooky I mean, like somebody that. Somebody just gifted and put yeah, in a closet Yeah, just put a closet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Never, never seen again, so. Um, yeah, so, Rutan, um, I, ARCs is coming along. Do you have any thoughts about, uh, do you want to? Yeah, I'll say a quick ARCs for yeah. people, because people want to, uh, ARCs going great. I'm having a fun time working on it still. Yeah, fantastic. Um, single session mode is the main thing that I've been, like, tasked to, um, you know, finishing and polishing up. It's going great. Uh, I think single session mode is awesome. I think the campaign mode is going really well. Josh and Cole have been doing really good work on the events list, um, how the plots are hooking into it and stuff. Um, it's very cool. I know I'm sure Cole's going to have more to say after coming back from yeah. the Games Expo with tons of more feedback, but it's going great. Good. Yeah. Good. Uh, yeah, I haven't been as involved because I've um, got, got my own projects That's, to work on. It's also just such a big game. <laughs> it is such a big game. You have to be like really familiar with it to keep up to be with in the it. change. No, no, exactly, yeah, 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 yeah. It's, yeah. yeah. Because it's just so... so it, it, just isn't, it just it's, I'm not, I wouldn't say it's not worth my time, it's just, it just would be the impossible. The buy is a lot. Yeah, 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 yeah for sure. It would be impossible for me to manage that. Um, and uh, we got our interns in, so yep. we have... Um, well, we just picked up a lot of people, and it is very busy here right now. I'm actually a little bit stunned right now because I a lot know, of bodies, a lot of bodies, a lot of new people. So mm-hmm. we got yeah, so we have uh, two people that are working at the early half of the week yep. uh, who are just our traditional interns, and they're helping us uh, just do production stuff and mm-hmm. testing. And I turned them loose on a design problem within Path yesterday, and it was bedlam. Uh, they got really excited about nice. it, so it was awesome. good. Yep. Bedlam in the best way. And uh, and then my production assistant, Alita, has returned because um, uh, she just graduated college. And uh, then we have two guys coming in at the late half of the week just to do, um, primarily just to do playtesting, but they have done some production work. So, so that's been pretty exciting. Mm-hmm. Um, it is a lot. I, as someone who is... You pro- have another uh, contract graphic designer? Oh, as yes. Well. Emily. Emily as well. We have some people coming in. We have Emily as well. Uh, yeah, we have Emily coming in, um, and they are... Uh, Graphic design support, uh, and and that's uh, that's good. Yeah, yeah. So as as I approach fifty, I'm like that much change that quickly. I'm like, <gasps> but I'm I'm excited. So, um, <laughs> development on path theming. I can talk about that when I get to the path part. All right. Yeah, I can. We're gonna solo. Yeah. So there's two questions about solo. Um, um, <laughs> you want to go first? 
think it's easier to make a solo mode, or do you find yourself forcing an archetype onto the CPU that a player might? Wow. I'm going to need Cole to answer that one. Okay. Um, yeah, when you talk about solo, go for sure, it. Sure, I'll go for it. Um, so the, the, the simple one for uh, SP Shaman, what's the hardest part of making a, designing a solo mode, in my opinion? Uh, it just being fun. Um, I think that you have so much less um, attention of a player that you need to be maintaining, and like the height needs to be kept there for so much longer um, because you don't have another player at the table to you know, keep interest or to introduce that change or whatnot. So the... I often talk about it like the call of the void, um, which is like the recognition that you are playing a solo game by yourself and like the, the cards and dice or it can be anything you want. Um, I think like, it, it's like the cheating too. I mean, it's yeah, like all, yeah. all of those parts yeah. are like, you know, once you get into the like, well, maybe I'll fudge that number one part or whatnot. It's like, to me, that's when all of solo gaming starts to shatter. So having a game that's buy-in is high enough that you don't want to do that. Like, it, like, feels in, inappropriate to do that almost. And then also, though, where you're, like, excited to keep doing that, I think is really hard. Um, and then about the, like, solo modes for being a human opponent versus... Um, yeah, that's, like, a bot per person question. Um, I think, in general, what you're trying to do, though, at least when it comes to Root and Oath, it's about roughly translating to something a player is going to reasonably do, which mm -hmm. is what's really tricky. Because you're trying to make an algorithm that looks at the game state and says, like, okay. if this, then this, if this, then that. Yeah. And you just need to do that, like, all the way down, um, which is... So it's, so it's like chat GPT. It's not actually aware of what it's doing. Exactly. Yeah, it's, it's just, just doing stuff. It's just trying to predict, yeah, yeah. what would be the that best might thing. might be what, like, what a player does, really, yeah. Really tricky. Ooh, I just used an AI, AI analogy. Mm -hmm. uh oh So, yeah, I think, um, yeah, it's solo mode is definitely one of... Um, not my weaknesses, I'd say, certainly, in terms of designing. It's something that I try to get better at, but it's it's hard. It's really hard. Doing good solo work is really impressive, as I've found more. So if you look at, the, like, the different schools of game design, you know, and I, I, I talk about European, Mid-Atlantic, yeah. American, and maybe Japanese. Mm -hmm. um, it, it, like, I would not ask someone who's designed a lot of American games without experience to mm -hmm. design a Euro. Like, sure. it was, yep. be like, I wouldn't ask. Yep. I wouldn't ask Stephen King to write a um, a romance. Sure. Though maybe he could do it. Maybe I don't, I, I don't know. Yeah. Um, and you know, I'd ask Stephen King to write another horror novel if you know his body of work wasn't large enough. I don't really. I'm fine either way. Um, and so for me, like asking someone, like all of our games, Cole's games, mm -hmm. the things you've worked on, the things I've worked on. Mm -hmm all has such a high level of interactivity that, like, to me, it's just, it's getting away from, like, why we're working on the design. You know, beyond school, yeah, yeah, even, totally. even within school, you could say Euro solo or Euro. And, um, like, I, you know, I think Onerim is a fantastic game that I play a lot of and I enjoy mm -hmm. because it was designed to be a solo game. Mm -hmm. And and so to, to adapt another system to make, to make a game play solo, um, it's just weird to me. Yeah, I mean, our, our games lever leverage the social aspect so much. Yeah. Like, so, so much that when the moment you try to take it away entirely, I mean, I always think of the, like, the simple question of, like, why do you play games? And it's, like, the top of mind is, like, I play games for the other people to on the table. To my friends. Yeah, 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 yeah. So the moment it's a solo game, I'm like, woof, you need to be doing a heavy lift on yeah. that side of, like, not being with people. Um, yeah, so yeah. And I, I do like the bots, and I appreciate that the bots for Root got yeah. people into playing the game. And I will continue to make them for yep. the, for their audience because I think that they uh, they like it and, no, they, totally. and I think it's great that they can have that. Um, but I wouldn't have tasked myself with designing. Yeah, bots. Yeah. yeah, That was that was it was a good it was someone that was good at designing solo came and worked on the bots. Yep. Uh, so for me, it's kind of a non-starter of a question because I just I just would rather not. would rather not yeah, do it. Yeah. And if I was to, if you asked me, hey Patrick, can you design a solo game? And I do have solo games on my notes. I would sit down and say. I'm going to make a solo game right. to start. That, yeah. I, would, I, would, yeah. I would agree that that would be yeah. my and, approach. And then I'll focus on what I like to do. which is When to, I'm doing stuff by myself. Which is to focus on the yep. narrative. Yep. Yep. I actually, funny enough, I have an idea for a solo game. I'll talk to you about it later. Oh, I do too. Okay, we'll talk, yeah, we, we'll talk later. We'll talk later now. <laughs> uh, okay, uh, pitch live on the air. Yeah. Um, <laughs> So that, so that, to me, that's it. Uh, I can talk about, yeah, it's a theme, theme, we'll get to that. Let's talk about... Um, 
You're doing some work. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. we still so got studio news. So studio news uh, going along here. Uh, we're going to be at Origins at the yeah. end of this month. Uh, whatever dates Origins are, we won't be there at any other time. Um, we actually are arriving really early, like Tuesday or something like that. But that's good because it's data rest. Is it a four day convention? It must so. be Thursday, yeah, Friday. Thursday. It's a Thursday. Yeah. Okay. So um, four days. Uh, the second best four days of gaming in the U.S. Uh, Gen Con's, uh, I believe Gen Con's uh, oh, tag, tagline was yeah, the best four days of the, gaming. Yeah, they have the license. Uh, we'll be at booth one three zero eight, according to our producer. Um, and, uh, yeah, well, um, I think about half of us will be there, and mm-hmm. I'm, I'm pretty excited to go and uh, uh, get to do some crowd work and get to get to enjoy people. June yeah. 21st to 25th in Columbus, Ohio. Yeah, Origins is always pretty chill, so. Yeah, I like Origins a lot because we get to, like, I if I brought a prototype of Path along, I would expect to get to You'll play it. You'll be able to get to play it, actually. Yeah, yeah. 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 Gen Con and stuff's just too busy. It's just too busy. Yeah, so, totally agree. Yep, so I like it. And, you know, and the awards, and it's all fun. Uh, okay, uh, yeah, so let's, uh, so you've been doing some work on Ahoy, and it's still pretty, you know, correct me if anything I say sure. is out, out of what you and Cole have discussed, but it's still pretty preliminary, and I think you're trying to get a feel for uh, if it's even possible, because Ahoy was designed with a much more focused, mm-hmm. internally, yeah, yeah. Between, the, between the language the factions have between each other is a lot more strict than it is in Root, yeah. and uh so, but so you've been kind of taking a swing at designing uh, factions. But do you want to talk about that at all? Yeah, yeah, I'd love yep. to. So, yeah, I've been working on more Ahoy content, um, <laughs> the- theoretical Ahoy content. Um, the two, the two big things for the game that I was interested in trying to add were um, new options for three and four player. Mm-hmm. So, just another way for if people want to be the two big warring factions, another play, another way for there to be a third entity in the game. Um, And even in working on the base version of it, a lot of things that came up very early are like a sea monster. So that was one of the like first notes of things to like try to put in the game clearly, right? It's just like a cool thematic thing. If you could play as a sea monster, awesome. So um, one of the factions I'm working on for a third or fourth player replacement. So this would be, you still always need the uh, the Mollusk Union or the Bluefin Squadron Mm -hmm. for for these factions. And then you'd be able to bring in the sea monster for Mm -hmm. instead of one of the smugglers. Um, And the sea monster is essentially like a giant snake. Uh, it has a big head. It leaves behind body segments, kind of like snake. And it's essentially moving around the map, um, trying to consume sharks and comrades and crew off of islands in order to increase its body size, increase how far it can move. And then that allows it to move further, eat further away, attack mm. farther. Um, and then it increases the point value for the region uh, if any of its body segments are there. And then similarly, players can hunt the sea monster for points. So mm-hmm. if you ever you know defeat them in a combat and get one of them, you can. Oh, uh, so if like the if the blue fins have an area shored up, yeah, the yellow player could still come in and blow up a part just exactly. to lower the points. Yeah, okay. it's just to yep. lower. Yeah, it's just to get the threshold down. Um, and then there's you know cool things where you know depending on what crew you know which crew they consume off of what islands they can like evolve and upgrade. So you might like you know throughout the game you'll like grow a second head and now you have two points of influence where you can attack from and stuff. You also have ones where you can you'll become armored and now like you ignore wreckage or people can't sail past you and stuff. Um, so yeah, having that player be um, it's a very like aggressive faction uh, oh, yeah. in a way that I like. It has the, the the dual nature of you want to be near the head and the body because mm. those sections are increasing the value of the regions. Um, but similarly, the head is very scary. It's the most dangerous piece that you can hang out. It's with. hurting you. Yeah. yeah, it's hurting you. So um, that's how that one's shaking out. Um, the other one is the swindler. I guess I'd call it for right now. Um, the idea there being kind of like a. Uh, a scammer, mercantile, Mm -hmm. uh, capitalist kind of thing. And um, a few of their things are they have five dice. Um, One of them they use at the top of turn to um, set their flagship, as Mm -hmm. well as the buildings that they'll build, as tailwinds for the other people to move to. So they kind of create infrastructure on the map for other people to go to. And then any time that you want to use the tailwind to come to me or to one of my resorts that I've built, I'll get a fame or a gold for that. Sure. As I'm sailing around the map, I'm also throwing out my goods into the water. So I have these uh, pearls and weapon caches. 
And whenever you pick up one of the pearls, which you have to do when you move through, um, I'll get fame equal to the value of the region. Mm -hmm. So there's this dynamic of like, I can build resorts to increase the region values. I want to put my goods there so you come over because the region's worth more now. But if you pick up my goods, I'll get points for that. Mm -hmm. um, they also are essentially a floating um, market board where any crew that they take, they don't get their abilities or anything, but you can now recruit crew from my ship as well. And sure. I, can, I can even strong arm them onto you. So you can like, you know, I can go and grab the convincing comrade off of the thing and go like deliver it to the mollusks to yeah. know, help them if they're losing or stuff. Um, so I really want you to have a sea dog. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, if they yeah. really, if it's really important for them. Um, so that's kind of where they exist. Definitely more of the, um, uh, in the otters, you know, mm -hmm. kind of space, right? It's about um, recognizing where people want to go, putting yourself in the middle, being in the position that they want to ahead of time, stuff like that. Um, so I'm really happy with those two. And then as well, um, the harder lift has been working on additional, um, what I'll call blue and yellow factions. Mm -hmm. So essentially an alternate bluefin squadron and an alternate mollusk union. Um, and it's because of what you talked about, the base language of the game is really tight and um, in a way that makes teaching the game and learning it so easy. It's one of the benefits of Ahoy. Um, words are called out directly on my player board and on your player board. Yeah, I don't yeah. I don't like go to reference a rule book and then need to. No, it says it's a comrade. Warrior exactly. Move. Yeah. It says yep. a comrade. That's your board says it's a comrade, we do that. Um, yep. but what that means is that certain um, I, I literally made like a uh, like a dependencies list almost when I started working on it of like sure. What are things that have to be in the game for it to keep working then, right? Because, like, you know, if the bluefin requires comrades to access X, Y, or Z, I need to make sure this player has comrades. So um, the new cut of the blue and yellow are, the blue currently are themed as, you know, like whales or orcas or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, and their primary ability to remove stuff is they can surge forward three spaces in a line and they remove all comrades when they do so. Um, and then their patrols that they set out um, aren't as mobile, but whenever they move, they also only move in straight lines and remove a single comrade from the mm -hmm. location they arrive at. Mm -hmm. So it's a lot more of a kind of tactical commanding faction where the Bluefin Squadron, you regularly have the ability to just tailwind and bombard, blow out the area. Um, you'll find yourself with this faction deploying more considerably about where you want to be so that you can like move them to where they need to go. Um, and then the alternate yellow doesn't have an animal yet. I don't know what they'll be. Mm -hmm. um, but their big thing is that they have a range die. It's like a D4 right now. And that determines how far you're going to be able to launch your mm -hmm. comrades at the end of a turn. So they have this um, like spatial range puzzle that they have to do where, you know, if you rolled your range and it's range four, suddenly you need to kind of like back up from these islands a little bit or, you know, get further yeah. away so that you can, you know, and then you have to in turn launch them onto it and whatnot. So... Um, I like the idea of launching your followers. I, it's yeah. like it's very funny thematically. Like I do, it's it's in um in a way that I know you know our games exist both on the like serious thinky things and very silly. silly it's like yeah, it's like yeah. fully on this so silly. Like yeah, I don't know. You're just like catapulting these guys across the islands, and you know it's where I thought I'm like you know maybe they're like turtles or something. So they get in their shell. You know like they, they, arrive. when they arrive, yeah, 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 yeah. They, yeah. and they're coming just fine. Um, any news for Ahoy Roots Mansion? I, we just, you, we just you, talked you, about you, Ahoy. Hop yeah, back yeah. a minute and you'll, you'll catch all of the Ahoy stuff. But yeah, I am working on, to the short, uh, working on new Ahoy content um, expansions for both the yellow and blue faction and possibly also an alternate three or four player. Yeah. So. Cool. Yeah. Yeah, I'm, I, uh, I, one of the things I've, you know, like, you know me, I always like the, I like the expansions, I like variant, I like, mm -hmm. I like once I had, have adopted a system and like it, I like to just explore more inside of that world yeah. a lot, and, and so I'll never shy, you know, my spouse will even like, like, uh, what was it, the like seasons that I yeah, 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 seasons, yep. She, she picked up one of the expansions and she was like, you don't have this one yet, I'm like, surely you want this, because it's, yeah, because yeah, it's, it's, like it's a seasons, it's a yeah. game you like, I'm like, well, yeah, I just don't see playing seasons that many more times. Times, so, yeah. yeah. So I didn't. I didn't. That was that was one time I didn't buy it. But no, Ahoy was a really tricky. Um, it was a really interesting dev challenge. It felt like um, impervious for a while in order to like yeah. create new content for it. And then I, a few, I'll write about it at some point. But a few little um, dev lessons about like how the math in the game actually is working and stuff allowed me to like. It was one day where I suddenly was like, oh, okay, I can make, like, three factions. Yeah. Um, and before that, it felt like it was almost impossible. So it was 
interesting to realize the potentials of the game. Um, yeah. So I'm still excited about getting you to put a whirlpool or a volcano in the dead right, space yeah. on the board, but yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll talk about Like that. a big big creepy rock or something. Yeah. Uh, mm -hmm. So you can interchange these so you're always playing blue and yellow, but you can mismatch basic. Yes, that is That's the like, ideal goal of the theoretical product that I'm working on. Yep. Yeah, so you could do blue fin versus either one of the yellows plus any one of the, you know, now three or four player ones plus a smuggler, a sea monster, or a swindler. Um, so then the goal is because, yeah, that really increases the, with that, you know, single two product or, you know, four expander, four um, factions, there's the number combinations is so much better suddenly. Yeah. Because um, I know a lot, of, and the big reason for doing it this way too is there's a lot of people, Ahoy is such a funny game, there's a lot of people who prefer it, are like, it's a 8 out of 10 two player game, yeah. and, uh, and a 5 out of 10 four player game. There's yeah. people who are completely the opposite, so definitely trying to service both um, audiences on that side for whoever, you know, whatever side you prefer. Ted and I were just having a chat about how um, Citadel's universally is, if you're introduced to it as a three player game, that mm -hmm. is, you think that is the only way to play. Sure. And if you're introduced to it as a party game, like six or seven so player you're game, like, that's clearly you're like, game. they play with three, like, what the hell is this game? Yeah, 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 no, that's not very cool. Um, yeah, potentially. They're yeah, really it depends tiles. on how, yeah. Depending on tiles and all the stuff. <laughs> um, I don't think we ever thought about a static map for Ahoy, did we? No, yeah, yeah I mean, I think, that was I think from creating, like... Creating is part of it, a huge part of it. Yeah, yeah, from yeah. the jump when the... That's like prior to it even coming onto our desk, it was always the tile thing, and it just felt... It felt right, yeah. I mean, I think the exploration aspect is one of, one of Ahoy's biggest draws, certainly, especially when you compare it to our other games. Yeah. I think it's really cool that... Most of our games have a map. It's drawn. You see it. You know where stuff is. Always the only one we have where you yeah. can discover it as you go. It does really well too because I think for me the like downside to building a map as you go. I it's vast, of course. What am I thinking? Sorry. Well, vast. Yeah, vast builds a map. Yeah, yeah. This is my like. You have to have it to be worthwhile to explore and not be just a massive pitfall for your character. <laughs> right, just a risk, and then you're like, okay, uh, I found like, nothing. Cool. Yeah, that's yeah. that's a lot of fun, and so that's I think that's always the pitfall of having the map be explored. Like, some people are like, well, what if we had like, like I you know like early on in Twilight Imperium, like mm -hmm. what if we've explored the map as we as we <laughs> as we flew away? And I'm like, well, first of all. You were a nation, yeah. At one point, like all the all the race, not you know, not a maybe a, a, a some, like a UN or an exter mm -hmm. exterior uh, external nation, but you were all you all know where each other are. So exploring isn't part of the theme, mm -hmm. uh, but also like, what if you flew into the sun, like or into the supernova, like? It doesn't make any sense thematically. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't you wouldn't have flown into <laughs> you that. Wouldn't, you wouldn't have just like dusted yourself into it. Yeah. So, but I, I think I think because of the the burden on each tile is so low in. Ahoy! I yeah. think I think you can do you can get away with quite a bit with it with exploring. I do like also. I think it creates a great decision of like, do I shore up what I have? Yeah. Or do I try and discover exactly. something new I can yeah, exploit? I mean, yeah. The, the reason it works in Ahoy is also is because you have that. Um, we'll talk about this forever, but like because you have that like ghost trail essentially of yeah. like you, you mark territory as you leave it. So by exploring new territory, you're like it's not like you've given up. What's yeah, yeah. Behind you instantly. Yeah. That's the other reason it gets away with it so well. I, you know, as, as a blue player, I always focused on, I just want to control the big numbers wherever they are. Yeah. Yeah, so. Uh, any new map tiles in Ahoy? I don't think so. Yeah, not currently. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, it would, that would be really... I've considered, you could maybe do a product, but you'd have to do um, you, new tiles and a new deck. It just would be a lot of content. It would create a lot of setup yeah. overhead. Yeah, yeah, I don't think that's going to happen. It's just a big content look. Uh, there was a question about the ARCs minis I'm not quite following. Uh, being tested for the original Tenet Ink Wash is still applicable. Yeah, we'll test them for the... Yeah, um, no. not, we're not there, not there we're yet, not, is what yeah, I'd say. Not, yeah, yeah, yeah ARCs minis yeah, yeah. are still, still being figured out. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. Uh, all right, well... Um, what about you, Patrick? What have you been working on? <laughs> most natural transition. Uh, most natural transition. I see water here. I have not. Uh, yeah, there you go. Yeah. This is where Hoy takes place. Yeah. Uh, I haven't been this, like... You know, I worked... I did the root expansions. Yep. I did two of the root expansions. And I... Um, um, this is like like vast is now plaguing my like subconscious mm -hmm. like like I fell asleep in a dream I had that's how it goes yeah Sunday night I dreamt about path all night not mm -hmm. good not bad yep just me working on problems in my sleep so mm -hmm. so we're we're there and my you know sometimes I'll come home for dinner and I'll be like I'm like 
you know, my spouse would be like, where, where, yeah, where are you? Yeah, yeah, still, still stumbling I'm, over I'm problems. Still, I'm still thinking about totally. problems, yeah. So, so we're there. That's where we're at with Path. And I said to you this morning, it's like, I, you know, out of context, I said I don't enjoy it. But it's not that I don't, it's... The hard part. It's the hard part. Yeah. I don't enjoy playing it right now. Mm -hmm. I enjoy fixing the problems that make me not enjoy playing it. Exactly. Right now. exactly yeah. yeah, so, yeah, the, so that's where I'm at right now yeah. with it. So, um, so it's pretty crazy. Uh, yeah, so Path has changed a lot in the past couple of months, and I've been kind of tight-lipped about it online. I've been showing pictures, but I didn't really talk about the design chats. But, mm -hmm. um, yeah, we, we've uh, come along pretty far. Um, so, uh, Brooke, do you want to change the angle? Is that okay? Hey! So here we are. Um, I chose the wrong. I chose the wrong grace because they're not or the wrong people. So we're not sure. Why did you pick green? Why did I pick green? I'm a fool. Okay. Uh, yeah. So um, and I wrote a little list here. I'm going to try and stick to this list. So yeah, we have uh, we have a new map. Uh, I have not ruled out making a modular map yet, but that is a lot of development overhead. I don't want to deal with right now, so I've drawn this map out. I started to do a modular map, and I realized that it was going to be the same game every time, with, even with the modular map, because yeah. of, because of the because of the restrictions that the map is putting put on, on me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So I was like, well, then what's the point? I may as well just use this map. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I've been using that map right now. Um, this is. Currently the smallest, I think I can get the hexes, and you see even now the titles are, is that going to fly, or how are we going to do that? Yeah, it's come up with shorter names. It's got, all right, that's it's fair. easy. Fair. <laughs> shorter, uh, shorter names. Yeah, so we're going, uh, so uh, this is about the smallest, so I can get the hexes right now and still be comfortable with it, and this is a large uh, 24 by 24 square right now. Uh, so yeah, you have plains, you have woods, you have mountains, you have uh, this lake in the center of the map. Uh, there are towns, there are cities, For each city is linked thematically to one of the factions in the game. Mm -hmm. uh, there are runes we can explore, we'll be putting treasure chests, and of course all these pieces are from these old prototypes, yeah, yeah. from other games. Even this map is very <laughs> prototype. Um, and so, um, uh, so you can wander around the map and you can do these things. One of the goals of the game then is to make it so that every piece on the map is like 100% representative of what's going on in the game. So if there's a soldier here, obviously there's a soldier there. If there is, I didn't bring another wall down, but if you put a wall on top of the city wall, all that, that represents that that society has become more militarized, so all the soldiers are harder to defeat in combat. Mm -hmm. And then as the game goes on, you can start snaking these across the board, you can block the other players that aren't friendly with this faction, mm -hmm. you can march them into the other faction cities to destroy them, and so on. So everything has, every piece is kind of like, takes up a hex and represents, um, you know, contextually wherever it's sitting, mm -hmm. it means something different. So this treasure in a rune shows where you can, I don't know how well you can see it, there's a little treasure chest there. Um, that represents then a, uh, a treasure a player can come and recover from this rune, and then they can bring it over to uh, the locals here and deliver it. And both of those have a reward. Mm -hmm. And that also means that treasure is going to stay there. That means another player can come and steal that treasure and take it somewhere else. Um, and while the locals have it, they grow in power. And so whenever they deploy troops to the board, they'll get more troops or they'll get more walls or whatever whatever the reward is for uh, their, the action they're taking at the moment. Mm -hmm. um, and there's monsters who are larger than the soldiers. There's other kinds of soldiers. There's whites that'll come out of the um, out of the, the abyss. There's uh, trolls that'll come out of the underground that'll occupy the map. And they're kind of a more of a neutral faction. They don't really do like they don't actively move around as much as the factions do. Uh, yeah, and so that's uh, that's where we're we've been moving along. So. Um, during the game, we should have read some transitionary questions. But sure, yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> um, so during the game, you're going to be, um, I don't know how much we can see here. So along the top of the board, you knew you'd actually put them off to the off the yeah. board, but uh, we'll be doing we'll be doing this. So during the game, there's going to be um, four path cards along the top of the board, mm -hmm. and these. So the the goal is to have all the like low level missions. Steal treasure, steal relics, um, deliver goods, mm -hmm. uh, fight with soldiers for bounties, things like that. Those will all be on the board at the beginning of the game. During the game, these path cards are going to come out. So there's going to be three cards in the Herald at the start of the game. Um, 
These are the victory conditions of the game. And so, like, for instance, the dragon here is going to spawn. He won't spawn. He'll spawn up here in the cauldron. And a player then, if they have influence of the Ogre King, they can get the key from the Ogre King to go fight the dragon. So then they go fight the dragon, and they claim this uh, path card into their own play area. And then it's now their goal to do it. Once they've killed the dragon, uh, they can flip it over, and I try to print out a double-sided card for this, for this, right. but the printer did its thing. Um, it's back well, somewhere. <laughs> it's, it's somewhere up there, yeah, it's on my computer. Uh, once, the, once the dragon's killed, you become the dragon slayer, and that changes the game for you. Uh, other monsters are harder to kill because they hate you now. Uh, and um, you get like a title, you get the, the title has some benefit associated with mm -hmm. it and so on. And then uh, that card will get replaced, and then that will that'll start a new little adventure for the other players, and it'll continue as, as the path cards come out of the top, little snowball. Once a player gets the three path cards, then they uh, win the game. And that also, up for debate. I mean, we could talk about two, we could sure, talk about four. Yeah, I, think, I, think that's, I think that's just going to be a way to control the length of the game. Sure. Um, <clears throat> so if, if players want to go crazy and play a long, long session, oh, they sure, can. one of those. You know, yeah. Set a, set a goal. And, yeah. Yeah. Uh, sorry about that. Path guards, hydraulics. Um, so what? I, so then, where the story beats are going to come? One of the other ways that we're going to put story beats in this game is instead of having it be like talisman, where you land on a space, draw a card, land on a space, draw a card, land on a space, draw a card, is that um, whenever you fail to do something, so if a monster defeats you in a fight, mm -hmm. uh, or if you uh, fail to recover a treasure, mm -hmm. the, the theft roll. Um, if you fail to recover a treasure from somewhere, you'll get an opportunity card. And then um, we're still pitching this, but basically the opportunity cards will go in your hand and they'll be the little story beats. So it'll say like, go to the maze to talk to so-and-so to get a point of influence or sure. something like that. And uh, the reason, so I wanna make those so that even when you're failing, you're still getting some little kickback out of the sure. game. And it's gonna make people wanna go, well, I have three of these for the maze now. Maybe I'm gonna go over there, the maze yeah, and sure. get, some, get some benefit out of it. So. Yeah, so I've been working on putting a little finger on the scale of some other parts of the yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So so people rotate and yeah. and the same way that being the dragon slayer makes the other monsters harder yeah. to kill. You're probably really good at killing monsters at the point they kill the dragon. So we want you to go, well, maybe I maybe should, I should stop, kill another keep, monster. Yeah, maybe yeah. I'll keep doing it. Yep. Uh, movement then is governed by on your turn, you're gonna um, pick to either do a um, move action, fight something. When you fight something, you can move one space and and fight it regardless of um, like if you like that nation or not. Uh, and or you can steal something. So when you move, you'll just be rolling these four dice. They have the terrains on them, so there's two grass, two trees, and two mountains. Mm -hmm. And then you can always trade down. So if you roll sure. if you roll four mountains, you can go four planes if I you see. want to, or something like that. Yeah. Um, then, um, so yeah, so you can you can do any of those three. You can move, fight, or steal right now um, and then also every turn you get one what's called a crown action and the crown action then is like pick them deliver a good draw an opportunity card if you're in town maybe hear some local rumors or something yeah, like that kind of like those, those extreme those like buy the, some equipment yeah, things like that stuff yep. done. yeah so um so that's coming along um this has changed a bit lately, so I'm still testing. I'm not. Yeah, I mean, um, movement on these types of like. I'm not on super pumped about it, yeah, but tricky, yeah, yeah. Yep. But it's. I mean, I've definitely played multiple versions with a lot of different movement systems, and it's one of the. Um, definitely can speak to the similarities of of, of Ahoy and this, and the like a. If you're gonna be picking up and delivering things, the movement is such a it's, it it's, has it's, to be it's, so it's, good. It's, yeah, it's, it's like the whole it's the whole the whole thing. So yeah, it's it's important to be yeah, like. Um, reconsidering it, but I do see the I like um, I like how this version starts to go with the I can see how with the um, endurance and stuff mm -hmm. there's there's a world here where you can start to get to it, but I it's it's tricky about knowing what you want to be able to do. But you don't want to punish delivering too much, right, and you're right. getting chased anyway right. when you're delivering. And yeah, yeah. So so at the end of the day, I do want to deliver. Yeah. So there's bandits that will walk around the map and they'll harass you if you uh, are trying to be if you're trying to deliver like treasure or if you're trying to carry goods somewhere. That's one of my favorite things is if you are moving like too slow or ending too close to the bad guys, they just sneak they'll, over and try to rob you. you. Yeah, they try yeah. to rob you. Uh, okay, so then, and then periodically, I didn't talk about this in the path cards, periodically then each path card then has an event on it, and so there will be a herald piece, so we're actually going to change the name of herald card, and the herald piece will move from event to event whenever that interval happens, and then that'll trigger something in the game. So for instance, the dragon 
uh, will eat a piece and put them on the card. And then when they get to five pieces eaten, um, and there's a new ending. Sure. Yeah, so there's a card that goes over the top of the dragon card, and that represents the dragon is now powerful. He's a little bit harder to kill. You don't need to claim him to kill him if he okay. hasn't been claimed yet. And uh, But when he act next time he activates, he will destroy an entire faction. So you have to be, and that will end the game. If he does that three times, then there will be no more factions left and the game's over. And then it just goes to a Roswell path cards at that point. Uh, and that, like, last time we played on Friday, the game spiraled. It was, it was glorious. Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There was two monsters just gobbling up the board. And, um, the, uh, and then, like, there was uh, one of the empires that activated and was just marching around, destroying everything. So it was a lot of fun. Uh, and then uh, all I have left to show is I didn't bring the dice down for it. I didn't bring any dice down for it. Well, that's bad. Bad for me. Okay. So, and I hope you can see this. I'll hold it up, maybe. Oh. Uh, no, it's not really going to show. Okay. So, um, so what this is, is the combat system is now, and um, uh, this was brought to me by Ted, our staff accountant. Um, so, you're going to roll two, three, or four dice. They're going to be symbols. They won't be numbers, but for prototype, we get to use one, two, three, four, five, six. Um, and you'll roll, so you'll distribute the dice among these four pools. So, you have to put, you can only put one in each. And then that generates how much you, um, how hard you hit and how hard you protect yourself each turn. And um, this has been pretty cool so far. There's like, you have the opportunity to avoid combat if you want to, but you have to avoid it for three rounds to successfully escape. Um, otherwise, you are trying to hit the, the RPG the, runaway roll. Yeah, yeah. Sitting there, yeah. Sco <laughs> Scooby doing your legs until you get all this. <laughs> until you get out of there. Yeah. Uh, and. Um, yeah, I've been really, I've been really happy with this system. It gives a definite ramp to like when you start the game. Yeah, you can fight a bandit and it's gonna hurt, mm -hmm. but you probably shouldn't fight a troll yet. And yep. then as you get equipment, now suddenly a troll or a mm -hmm. wraith becomes possible. And so yeah, and so then as the game goes on, you'll get you'll be able to buy equipment, and then that just fits into these slots and uh, replaces what's the, the, the symbols will change, mm -hmm. and then you become more powerful in battle. So I'm really enjoying this. We still have a ton of balancing to do here because. Yeah, yeah. Um, I feel like I've been locked out of <laughs> a couple of games mm -hmm. when, the, when the other players are, are doing well with it. And I'm like, oh, no. And then the other cool part about that then is as you flip over the cards, the path cards to get the benefit of whatever the path is, um, you can now, you know, we can now give like special artifacts that mm -hmm. go over the top of these and they're quite a bit more powerful. So Get the dragon skin armor. Or yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it's really cool. I mean, I kept doubling down on some like Axis and Allies 5 plus system. Oh, sure. and, and I just could not get off of it. And... And I kept like spending time, like, ah, I can get this right. And I think it was doing mostly what we wanted to do. It just people weren't understanding the power curve much. Sure. And I think this is a much clearer illustration of the power curve. Now you can look at it and go, okay, well, if I don't have the short sword, I can only do one damage around. Exactly. Yeah. So can I fight something that has four health no. in three rounds? No. no. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So yeah. I need to I need to do this. Yeah. Uh, the other cool part about it is we're still experimenting with this, but if we're allowing it so that you um you can roll two, three, or four combat dice a turn, and mm -hmm. then um, if you roll any doubles though on it, then the monster does something different. Um, and so, sure. so now you're you're managing how much risk you want to accept. I in, see. In the fight, so yeah, it's been a lot of fun. Um, what are you most excited about in it right now? It's your I, favorite part. Of I'm life. most excited about the. Uh, I like the. Um, I like. I really like the pa designing the path cards. Yeah. And how the, how it's kind of like. If you can imagine playing a shorter version of a haunt in Betrayal. Sure. And then, but it's the three, it's three haunts coming together. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the doorbell rings yeah. and Frankenstein, Dracula, sure. and, and a the, witch are standing on the doorstep. And you're like, oh, I'm going to deal with all this now. Sure. Um, but there's, but it's still competitive, so I don't have to worry about you being bad at dealing with yeah, the witch. Yeah, I can, not knowing how to do it. <laughs> I can just go deal with Dracula and, and have my own story. So, Super cool. I'm excited about that. I, I think... The system is there, and now we just need to move the, the as I say, we need to make the parts touch a little bit better so sure. that um, so that the story the story beats feel more comprehensive as you sure. move from moment to moment of the game. Mm -hmm. And then I still think there needs to be a little bit of a mid-tier for the characters, and so I think we'll, sure. we'll be working on that yeah, next that week. Yeah, makes sense, know? yeah. So, yeah, so I'm pretty excited. An arc, kind of an arc question. The right? arc, yeah, yeah, of the, the game, yeah, yeah, right, yeah, yeah exactly. the arc of the game, yep. And I keep getting stuck going for this ruin, so I guess i got to educate myself not to do that. Stop. Move okay. it up. Delete the ruin. <laughs> you as the designer delete the ruin? I can do that. Yeah, yeah, it's, it's gone. gone. <laughs> I'll never go for it again. So, yeah. 
So, any questions about any of that, or or anything else, or anything else? Yeah, going yeah. On? Uh, we four have a few minutes. more minutes. All right, and so I gotta I, get out at three because mm -hmm. my spouse is waiting to take me to the dentist. <laughs> um. All right, well, we'll we'll prattle with our own questions then. All right, what are what are some of your questions? Mm -hmm. And you're, now what's on you? What are you looking forward to playing that you haven't yet? Oh, I haven't played yet. Yeah, what's, uh, some, what's something on your on your on your shelf? Or, are you playing? Are you planning to play Diablo? I am planning on playing Diablo. Okay. We're gonna play tonight. I, uh, I have not still haven't broken Sleeping Gods out yet, and I'm playing. Oh, playing. sure. Yeah, I'm really looking forward to playing that. I got to play Heat last night, and I just want to play more Heat. Mm. Yeah. So how about you? If you? Oh yeah, you want to talk about theme a little bit? If oh you, yeah, I briefly know. touch. Oh, yeah, briefly. Gosh. Yeah, you know, with, with a little bit of time. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so a little bit of time. So I have this really weird concept document that I'm working on um, where I think um, I'm going to have to, I think I want to pitch like kind of a like high sci-fi, like Mobius uh, kind of concept where it's like just this weird ruined world and people live there and you don't understand how. Mm -hmm. Like they don't have farms or anything like that. Mm -hmm. They just live in buildings and everything seems yeah, fine yeah, for yeah. them. Yeah, I think I think I'm going to cut like... Like it's life on the moon or something like that. Sure. So it's like the plains will become like moon dust and the and the trees will become like a mushroom forest or something mm, like that. And then these will become mountain fortresses or something or ruins or something like that. So interesting. Yeah. So I think I, I think I'm gonna pitch that, but I don't know I don't know if I'm real I'm real sold on that yet. And I know, of course I had to get Kyle excited on that. So uh, timeline, uh, I won't have time for solo this this time. We can talk about it next time. Yeah. I gotta get going. Uh, timeline for projects is I think it'll be crowdfunding for Oath or Hoy, depending on which one we do next, and then it will be um, and then it will be Path for sure um, soon. And um, uh, oh, I can give a quick yeah, go for Old King's Crown. Um, yeah, I mean because I was, I was a, yeah, 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 I was more involved than, yeah, than yeah, you yeah. were a little bit. Yeah. But, um, gave um, feedback and it was on. On my desk, on me and Cole's desk for a little while just to review, see if it was something we were interested in, provide feedback. Mm -hmm. um, and the game's really cool, uh, is, is what I would underline. I, I found it to be a really cool title with a lot of interesting things. Um, they took some of our feedback from me and Cole's plays and stuff, and um, I, th I think the game's even better than when we first played it because of it. Um, I would yeah. definitely check out Old King's Crown. I think it's a really cool game. I just I just gave them a lot of business development advice. So, yeah, yeah. So there was a lot of a lot of it back and forth. On that, yeah, so. and for me it was all just game dev stuff. On yeah. Surprise <laughs> Finders only only development advice about yeah how how the cards and stuff could work together and whatnot. So it was really fun. Yeah, so. great team, great nice people. Yes. So. All right. Well, take care, everybody. Yeah. Have a nice day, everybody. It was great we'll, talking to you. We'll talk to you in July. <clears throat> Bye. Bye. All right. I was